So there's no leaks here. Oh, here we go. Motor's spinning up. Hey guys, we got a trouble call today to a uh, underground pump installation. We have a skimming well. The ocean here just soaks through the entire island. And if you dig too deep, you'll get into brackish water. So what they would do is dig down and just right as they reach the freshwater table, they'll dig a horizontal tunnel and then skim that fresh water off the top of the salt water. Um, this one was put in in the 30s. It's pretty old. It used to be for the uh, sugar mill here, one of the sugar mills here. The trouble call is a calm fall. It's likely a trip breaker uh, at the bottom of the shaft, but it could be something else going on. Right now, our serial structure is a uh, PLC at the bottom of the shaft that's communicating with a, a drive uh, via ethernet. And then the PLC is using a serial link to a fiber optic bridge and then fiber optic cable to the top of the shaft to communicate with an HMI at the top. The operator uh, likes to be able to vary the speed of the pump to dial in the flow so that their infrastructure is all balanced. So yeah, should be pretty straightforward. All right, see you there. All right, so here's our top HMI. We got PLC comms timeout. Uh, controls, toggle switch on and off. We're gonna put it in off for now. Um, I don't want it to start up on me while I'm down there. Eh, actually, that wouldn't matter. Let's keep it on. So we've got our controls there. And PLC timeout. Perfect. Let's do some basic checks in here first. All right, inside, everything looks pretty basic. Um, just power supply, two fuses, our 120 in breaker at the bottom. The only things we're running here is this uh, Ethernet switch and our HMI. Everything else looks good. Here's our fiber in, comm box, and output. And you can see I've got no transmitter receive lights on where that fiber's coming in. So, yep, time to go down. All right, let's head down. I never did count the number of stairs. I just take it for what it is. It's a lot of stairs. Probably I can't count that high either. You can see the railing here. And then here's the original, I think 18 inch discharge line from the sugar mill days. Our more modern discharge line. I believe it's a six inch HDPE. Some old conduits from back in the day and then a uh, air circulation line from back in the day. I think they may have even had a diesel pump down here at one point in the sugar mill days. There was a little bit of evidence of that just with the amount of air circulation they were pumping down here. Don't know when this went out of service, probably the same year the mill did, um, just before. And they would only use this during droughts Otherwise, they just took what they needed from the streams. But, uh, yeah, nowadays they pull a lot less out of here. Going down is a whole different feeling than going up, but fortunately I kind of like hiking and climbing mountains and stuff, so this is just more leg practice.
more leg exercise. there. So here's our pump room. Pretty basic. Um, here's the actual skimming well that I mentioned before. Well, you can see that there, but there's our water table. And uh, if they kept digging any deeper, they'd reach salt water. But here at this depth, there's fl fresh water floating on top of it. The tunnel goes for another maybe 75 feet, 100 feet, and then curves to the right, a slight spiral. Again, just to increase that surface area that they can skim the fresh water off. Uh, just basic layout here. Suction lift, single stage pump, discharge, priming point, check valve, flow switch. Then we transition from ductile to the uh, HDPE line. We've also got a priming solenoid up here. Uh, that's part of what this PLC controls down below. We take the static head on the discharge side of this check valve and open this priming solenoid for a period of time to ensure that in case the suction lift check valve down in the water table fails, we can get this pump primed before it starts spinning. I think it's like on a minute timer, something like that, a slight delay. And then um, that's about it for infrastructure. We get that flow feedback, that's our dry run protection. We're not sensing any level or anything. And uh, real basic, real simple. All right, let's see what's going on. Our drive is showing, drive cannot start due to active faults. Please reset the faults first. And we are in remote. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put this guy in local. Because I don't want him to take off running as soon as I clear or look at these faults. FBAA communication fault, no extra information. Is there a way to select that? Fault 7510. All right, this is what I didn't want. Um, our breakers tripped for our lower control panel. Pretty similar to the top, except we have a PLC here as well. Um, yeah, I really don't like it when it's just a breaker reset. I like finding, um, you know, reasons for things to fail rather than just, oh, the breaker was tripped. But uh, yeah, there's really no 120 leaving this panel. It comes in 120 and goes into the line side of this uh, D AC to DC power supply. Unless there's an internal short in the power supply, um, I really don't know what would trip that breaker other than maybe some strange voltages coming down the hole. It comes down here as 480. And then we get our 120 through this small, what are you, two KVA transformer. And that's what we're using for all our controls down here. We just put it on the same 480 feeder just to keep it, the installation simple. Anyways, everything looks good. Functions are all good. Don't see anything weird. Okay, well, first step, reset the breaker. There it goes, PLC's waking up, doing its blinking light routine. That's all good. That fault should clear on our soft or on our VFD. That may be a lockout fault that I have to reset. 
showing comms now and it's showing transmit and receive on there so let's try reset I do have it in local so in theory it shouldn't take off and run away but it always could surprise me okay now if I put it in remote we should get it to take off And at this point, there's really not much else for me to look at here. Power supply is good. Everything's good. I think I'm just going to chalk it up to uh, some kind of poor voltage. And then I need to let the operator know how to open this up and check that. Because this, this is too simple to warrant me or anyone from our company having to come here just to flip a breaker back on. If, the, if it keeps stripping or won't reset, then it makes sense to send us here. But that's well within this operator's wheelhouse and ability. So yeah, let's put it in remote and see if she takes off. There we go, remote. Yep, perfect. Start delay is active. So we could hear the solenoid suck in. Uh, and that means to me that the suction side check valve, which is down in this hole, is holding because I don't hear any water flowing. So the pressure the pressure on the inlet side of this blue check valve is the same as the pressure on the discharge side. But that solenoid is there in case there is a small leak in this foot valve down in the hole there. valve down there that's that blue thing at the bottom there that's a globe check valve I believe they call that so there's no leaks here oh here we go motor's spinning up we do a pretty slow ramp here uh, because of the inertia not of the pump and motor but of the water moving all the way up uh, to its destination so from here it goes into a reservoir you can hear that uh, ball check valve it's kind of chattering a little bit and our motors starting to ramp up it's just a single stage impeller pump what are we at 34 Hertz 36 38 39 ramping up 50 Hertz leveled off at 51 that must be where the operator wants it we're at about 3705 rpm sitting at about 43 amps what's our nameplate amps on this bad boy 79 amps so yeah we're well below the service factor looks good pumping along moving water we do all right then we just head back up top and we can check the water meter here's our discharge line going up Let's take another look at that so there's our pump suction comes up discharge check valve flow switch butterfly comes up transitions to the driscoll the hdpe and uh, from there, it goes all the way up the, the shaft. I think we're good down here. Unfortunately, it's just that breaker, and I don't really have anything to show for it, but, uh, except to just train the operator to check that the next time before they call me. Uh, yeah, let's head back up to the top, and we'll check the flow up there and see what it's doing.
Nice little workout. I always forget to count how many steps. <laughs> One of these times. <laughs> One of these times will be the last time I come down here. Maybe it's this time. We'll see. Man, just amazing. The guys dug this in the 30s with pneumatic tools and uh, buckets and shovels. Pretty amazing. Them old timers. Almost there. Yep, 3,075 RPM, looking good. Here on the HMI, using that serial connection, we just wanted to give them the simplest things. So, big arrows to control speed. Uh, the motor speed as a percentage of its total speed. It's amps, and the drive's calculated overload level. We could pull a whole lot more data, but we feel that's good enough and keep it simple. Sometimes too much data doesn't help. Let's take a look at this water meter. Here's the other end of that Driscoll line. Up here at the surface. There we go. What do we got? 150 GPM. Great. Very good. All right, that about covers it. Doesn't get much more simpler than that. Shut down these lights. One of my favorite things about this place is uh, the pencil and notes on the wall here. 252 steps. There seems to be some argument about how many steps there are. 250, 252, uh, and just little signatures. But here's 253, February 17th, 1937. Uh, here's 255 steps, apparently. What is that? Uh, July 19th, 1973, 2.45 p.m. M. Ichimura, perhaps? Uh, just great to see the history here. Really special place. Don't take it for granted that I get to uh, work in such cool locations. All right, see you on the next one.